This is a big one. I can't express enough, and I, I say this with all of them, but really, collaboration is the key to how I got my project done and how I get a lot of work done now. And I think we all think, oh, this is egotistical work. We've got to say, I'm the one who did it. It's me. I'm going to get the credit, so I've got to do all the hard work. But it's really collaboration is how things get done. Uh, and so accepting that and moving on and just saying, hey, let me go ahead and do that now from the beginning uh, is going to get you a lot further. For me, that came in a whole, different, a whole bunch of different forms. So here's a piece that I, wasn't collaborative. It's just another fun food piece. But what happened is at the end of that uh, post, I wrote a question. The question was just, you know, do you like peanut butter and jelly where, where you are? And asking a question is a great way to open up collaboration. And my friends in Australia said, we hate peanut butter and jelly, but we do like Vegemite. And so here's some Vegemite. We sent it to me from all the way from Australia. And I made this skull for them. So they got to collaborate with me in that way. And lots of people sent me materials from all over the world. Uh, and also people gave me access to unusual materials. So a friend of mine who's an artist let me work with her butterfly and insect collection to make this piece. I also ended up going into stores that I shop in all the time and talking about my project, and they gave me access. So in this case, in my local video store, I got to go behind the counter and rearrange all the DVDs in their store to make this piece. Not something I'd normally get to do, and not a question I'd normally ask. Now, a simple way that you could do this right now for yourself is an old trick we, we did when we were kids, which is having a little squiggle or doodle somebody's drawn and then creating a picture out of it. And a friend of mine, in, also here in Richmond, Virginia, named Matt Lively, did a project where he basically asks other people to draw a squiggle and then tell him what to make out of it. So he gets all of his inspiration by other people, and then he has to solve that problem creatively. And it's a simple little thing, and here's how he made getting out of your creative zone, <laughs> getting out of your comfort zone, I should say, uh, using his squiggle that he made. And this is the last big idea, and this is the obvious thing that everyone knows, but you only really know it uh, when you open yourself up to these opportunities. And I guess my point is really that uh, inspiration, creativity, new ideas, they don't have to come from outside. They don't have to be the, the muse of inspiration showing up, the lightning bolt of ideas that just randomly turn up. Those do happen, but if you're waiting around for them, it's really hard to get work done on a, on a normal 9 to 5 schedule. So my point is that you can make these ideas, these inspirations happen by, by taking active control of your creativity and doing stuff, just really anything. Silly things, a lot of these things I mentioned, they don't seem so complicated or unusual, but when you put yourself out there and try them out, you'll be surprised to see that the ideas start coming. And once you start generating ideas, they lead to more ideas and they keep going. You know, here's how it can work. I was walking down the street uh, in Richmond, Virginia, where I live, and I passed this building tons and tons of times. But once I started doing my skull project, I realized, oh, there's a skull right here that I've never seen before. So it's that simple. I was, I was doing it every day and my world looked differently and I saw more opportunities within it. 